Tulsi Gabbard has finally addressed, kind of, her voting record on the Second Amendment when she was a member of Congress. I have been very, very, very hard on Tulsi Gabbard. She has started to talk the good talk about the Second Amendment and supporting our Second Amendment since she decided she was running for president last cycle. And she has made some comments, she's posted more on her socials, she even took part in the tactical games recently. So she's starting to show more of her utilizing the Second Amendment, but I've always been hard on her because she's never addressed her voting record. She's said the right stuff recently, but she never addressed voting against the Second Amendment. Well, that finally has changed, and I'm here to show you what she's done, what she said, and to ask you, do you forgive her now? And are you supporting her? And is she only doing this because she's on the vice president list for two candidates this year running for president? I want to talk about that. But first, I want to thank the sponsor of the video, and that's Lear Capital. Guys and gals, it is no secret that our U.S. government is addicted to printing money. It's going, that's not going to stop at any time in the foreseeable future, regardless of who the president is or whatever politicians are currently in power. Uh, and if you believe that, like I truly do, I encourage you to call now and get the free report called $3,200 Gold from our friends at Lear Capital. It'll help you understand how rising debt means rising gold. It's great information and it's free. There's no obligation to purchase. And with all the volatility out there, if you've ever been considering gold, if you're paying attention to the gold market and who's buying gold, now is a great time to look into it. Many of you have made purchases. I've invested in gold and silver myself, and I am really, really glad that I did. Not to mention, uh, it is going to always have a value. It is always going to be an investment in your own wealth. So think about that. Call 1-800-260-5075. That's one 800 Two six zero five zero seven five, or head over to leargg.com to learn more. Let's continue talking about Tulsi Gabbard. She was interviewed by Donald Trump Jr. on his Triggered podcast, and he asked her because he saw people in the comments saying she's not really in support of the Second Amendment. Why did they say that? Because as a member of Congress, she was a Democrat, and she voted for all the common sense gun control they could possibly throw at the wall. Which is why people like myself, now that she is running, she's run for president, and now she is a candidate for vice president on two different lists, one Donald Trump, two uh, our Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. They're both considering her for vice president, so she really needs to help garner the vote. And she was, again, talking about the Second Amendment on the Donald Trump Jr. Trigger podcast. And he asked her because of what people were saying in the comments. And she actually finally addressed what happened during her time in Congress. And I'm going to address that as well when we come back. But I want you to hear it in Tulsi's own words. When I'm looking at the comments now, it, I think it seems, you know, one of the big concerns is, you know, about the Second Amendment. Obviously, you're a veteran. Uh, you've served. You understand that. And lately, I've seen you actually hanging out with some of my buddies, you know, over at Sons of Liberty Gunworks. I know I do stuff with them with my sort of outdoor publication and my sort of my crazy other lives. Uh, you know, talk a little bit about that, because there, there seems to be sort of, you know, ha has there been a change in that? Is there just a more of an understanding, uh, you know, of the Second Amendment, because it, it's the one that seems to repeat itself a lot. I'd love you to just be able to address it for the for the crowd. Yeah, of course. Now, I grew up here in Hawaii, where, as you probably know, uh, it's one of the most restrictive gun ownership states in the country. Uh, you know, I, I certainly didn't grow up in any kind of gun culture or things like some of my friends and your friends, or they grew up around guns ever since they were kids. Um, I probably shot a pistol with my dad a couple of times and didn't touch a rifle until I joined the military. And even then, for those of you who may be watching who served in the military, you know how restrictive the military is with firearms for safety reasons. You, you sign your rifle out, you go to the range, you qualify or you do your training event. Every single bullet is accounted for. Every single rifle is carefully accounted for. And of course, it's locked up at the end of the day. So I, I've always held the position that I support the Second Amendment and understood our, our intrinsic right as humans to defend ourselves and to defend our loved ones. 
I got to tell you, as time went on and I spent a lot of time, especially over my campaign for president and the years since, with a lot of folks in New Hampshire and Iowa and different parts of the country who had a very different experience than I did growing up. And they raised a lot of concerns about around some of the things that throughout my time in Congress had all been coined as, well, this is common sense gun safety laws. This is well-intentioned in order to try to make sure that our communities are safe. Yeah. That's a pretty compelling argument. But as with many things in Washington, as you know well, once you start peeling back the surface, you can understand that for a lot of folks who are using those words, they don't have good intentions at all. Their real objective is to try to get rid of the Second Amendment and take away our right to own firearms and our right to defend ourselves. And even more pointedly, especially with where we are now and where the Biden-Harris administration has taken us, our founders intended the Second Amendment to be a check on the abuse of power by a tyrannical government. And when you look back at the things that started to roll out throughout COVID, when you look at what the Biden-Harris administration has done, where they're using the power of our law enforcement, the county, state, and federal level in different ways, using the power of the Department of Justice, the power of the national security state against American citizens. You had that clip of, of Representative Adam Schiff there in your opening, mm -hmm. one of the biggest offenders of this, where they have no issue using the secret FISA court to surveil Americans illegally without a warrant. They have no issue sicking the FBI or other law enforcement agencies against American citizens who've done nothing wrong other than exercise their right to free speech. So over time, my increased understanding, my being able to have some really great and honest conversations with Americans who cherish our freedom, who cherish the Second Amendment, um, helped me better understand what it really meant. Uh, my husband and I are, are gun owners and uh, recently competed in the tactical games for the first time. Um, I appreciate and respect every American's right to own a gun or not to own a gun. All right, there you hear it from Tulsi Gabbard, right? Right from the horse's mouth. But my concern is, is if we take that on face value, that she did vote for those things, anti-gun laws and well, bills, because they were common sense gun control and everybody wants common sense and safety, well, then she's telling us that she only went along with the mob mentality and she didn't do her own homework. And she voted on things that violated the Constitution because of the Democrat Party and the swamp. And she got caught up in it, believing what they were selling her. Do we forgive her now? Do we say, well, if you were... I don't want to say gullible, but if you were gullible enough then to fall for it, why wouldn't you be now if you are a vice president choice for either Donald Trump or RFK Jr.? I'm man enough to say when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. However, right now, I, I'm, not, I'm not forgiving her 100%. Before she addressed this, I was a hard no. She has said a lot of good things especially since she's left the Democrat Party, where she has come to the center. She is actually more leaning to the right. She's not far right by any stretch of the imagination, which is fine, because I'm not far right either. But where are you now? You've heard her address her time in Congress. I was a hard no. I've softened my stance. I might be willing to see what Tulsi can do now because she's pissed off at the Democrat Party. Maybe she has opened her eyes. At least she's saying that now. It's making people think that she has opened her eyes. And perhaps she could be a good vice presidential candidate. But do we forget her? Do we forget her? Do we forgive her on the Second Amendment stance? I want to know what you have to say now hearing what she has said. Sound off down below. Subscribe to this channel if you want more information on the Second Amendment, especially when people who are asking for your vote, or potentially, she has done it several times before, how they truly feel on our God-given right to protect ourselves that is enshrined in the U.S. Constitution 
and the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms, as well as the right to be part of the militia. So let me know what you guys and gals think down below. I truly want to see where you stand on this, because I'm in flux. I'll see you all on the next one. Have a phenomenal day. And the new episode of the Liberty Lounge podcast has just dropped. Our friend Brandon Herrera joined us in studio, well, remotely. Uh, and uh, we talked some cool things, including he drops an Easter egg on that AK-50. And you might want to see that. Link is down below. Like and subscribe here. Like and subscribe at the uh, Liberty Lounge podcast, as well as on the socials. And I appreciate you. See you on the next one. Take care.